In this video, we will build a custom HDI dome integration setup. This setup is vastly superior to V-Ray's native built-in tools, replicates a perfect round integration for your 3D assets, and is quite simple to set up and customize. So in this video, we will break down my favorite customized HDI dome setup, which in my opinion is vastly superior compared to V-Ray's native built-in tools. And that mainly has to do with the ground integration. So as you can see, if I move my camera around, we have this quite nice integration here with the ground floor. We even have some kind of water puddles here on the floor where our car is reflecting inside. We have some bump mapping on the floor, as you can see if I switch here to my normal pass. And I said all of this is derived from the HDRI itself. And if I rotate my camera around, you can see if we have the sun here in the back, we have these nice reflections which are showing up in the ground plane. We have this cutout from the car here, which basically blocks the environment reflection. And we have this quite nice and believable integration of the car in our environment from basically any kind of angle in here. And also you can see the ground blends here completely seamlessly into our background and there's no visible gaps or anything like this anywhere to be seen. So again, this is the advantage of using a customized floor plane. And now let's switch to V-Ray's native solution first and see what is the big difference compared to this setup in here. So this one here uses V-Ray's native tools to integrate a 3D object into an HDI dome. And while this is very easy to set up, you have some kind of disadvantages when it comes to ground integration. So as you can see here, the car doesn't really look completely integrated into our environment yet. We're kind of missing like the occlusion under the car. We have this shadow which comes from our sunlight, but the intensity doesn't really look very believable. And it's kind of looks like it's floating a little bit on top of the floor. Also, our floor doesn't really react to our environment at all. It basically just receives the shadow. And if I just rotate, for example, here where my sun is behind the car, we always have the same amount of brightness on the floor. There's no reflections which are moving over the floor. And we, of course, don't have any kind of bump mapping or any kind of surface details which kind of react to the sun position in here. And that I think is a clear disadvantage. But the main thing is that I don't really feel that this car here is really integrated into the environment because it just doesn't have the necessary darkening which is happening here under the car. And I think this is clearly a disadvantage. It works okay for some situations, but if you really want to generate a believable result, then my customized HDI solution is clearly superior, even though the setup is slightly more complex. If you want to know how the native built-in tools work in V-Ray, which are super easy to set up and might be sufficient for your kind of use case, I have my own dedicated video that you can find in my channel. So we're not going to be breaking down on how this setup here would be done. Instead, once more, we're going to be jumping back to our customized setup. You can see how much more grounded this car looks in the environment, how we have some nice reflections and details on the floor, how the floor here is reacting to the brightness of our environment. So we have some kind of more believable integration. You can see the sun is now behind the car and the car is blocking the reflections here on the floor. And we also have some nice bump mapping that's happening in here and these nice water puddles. So clearly this setup here is just much more refined compared to the standard solution. And that's why we're going to break down the basic workflow in this video. As always, if you want to jumpstart your progress, you can always find all of my scene files, also this scene file here, but without the car, of course, on my Patreon. You can also watch a whole course on car rendering, lots of bonus content content and so on over there. So check this out if that's interesting for you. Otherwise, let's just break down the basic workflow now. So this would be the starting point of our scene. You can see I placed already our trusted shading dummy in the center of the scene. And I also have this simple light here, which as you can see is the only light which is affecting our scene. And this is just a standard dome light, no finite dome or any other fancy option, just a standard dome light set to spherical full dome. And I just have an HDRI here mapped into the texture of the light. And in this one, the mapping type is set to spherical. And in V-Ray, you normally have to also flip it horizontally in order to make it show up correctly in your rendering. 
So now if I rotate our camera around, you can see that we're floating above the floor. And this makes sense because as I said, we're not using a finite dome. We don't really have any ground plane. We just have this infinitely far away HDRI. But this in the end won't really matter because we're only gonna be using this light for the illumination in our scene. We even gonna be putting this light here on invisible and everything that we're gonna see in the environment, we have to use geometry for. So now let's enable this one here so that we can temporarily see that again. And let's take care first about our environment dome. So now as a next step, let's take care about our environment dome. And for this, let me just unhide a geometry that I prepared already earlier. That would be this dome geometry in here. You can see that's very simple. It's just a sphere and the floor was kind of flattened out with this kind of gradual fall off here towards the sides. And then I also went in and flipped here the normals. You also notice that our rendering became completely black. That's because our dome here is blocking all of the illumination from our dome light. So even though it looks like this dome light here is placed inside our geometry dome, it's in reality infinitely far away and surrounding our scene. And then our dome here is kind of blocking everything. So in order to fix that, let's go in and use the object properties and let's disable here the cast shadow option. And once we do this, you can see that our dome light is now able to go through our geometry dome in here. You can notice that now our light can go through the dome here. That's why we have a shadow on the floor, but we also lost all of the reflections and that's intentional because those reflections here are blocked by the dome. And in order to have our correct reflection showing up on our shading dummy, we have to map this HDRI texture onto our geometry dome. So for this, let's use a simple V-Ray light material and let's copy the HDRI into the mapping slot in here as a copy. And then inside, let's switch the mapping type to 3ds Max standard because we have to use the UV coordinates here of this sphere and then just apply this on our geometry dome. Now, if we want to make this show up also in our viewport, we have to enable here the map to be shown in the viewport and then put this color here all the way to black. And now we're able to see our HDRI also on the dome geometry. So now let's zoom out and see how that looks like. And you will notice that as soon as we exit here our dome with the camera, we just have this completely black appearance. And we want to look through the dome here, similar like in the viewport. And we want to do that by adding here a simple V-Ray two-sided material and then putting the translucency all the way to zero. And now we can also add a backside material and let's just put a simple V-Ray light material. And this is now the material that shows here on the backside. Let's just put here a V-Ray color into the transparency and just decrease this all the way to black. And then also go back and enable the multiply color by opacity. And once we do this, you can see that now we can see our dome here in the correct way. Let's also go back inside our base material let's enable here this viewport display again so that we can see it both in the viewport and also in the rendering. So now let's make sure that our environment dome light and our geometry dome are properly aligned. You can see that is the case here. We have this building in our environment dome light here and that is positioned at the same place in our geometry dome. And then the bridge is on the right hand side. So we know nothing is mirrored or flipped or rotated wrong. And this way our HDI dome light lines up properly with our geometry dome and we have the correct illumination from the dome light and we have the correct reflections from our geometry dome. But you will notice that since we put a V-Ray light material here on our dome, we lost any kind of shadow here on the floor. And that of course is an issue that we have to address in the next step. So the way we can fix that is by adding a new floor geometry slightly on top of our dome geometry and then prepare the step already here by just adding this kind of circular floor. And now you can see if I zoom in, I will have my shadow back. But of course, the floor doesn't look anything like our environment and this we have to fix now in the next step. So I just applied this gray dummy material on our floor. And now let's take our HDI that we also mapped on our geometry dome and let's apply that to our floor. And once we do this, we can see we have the correct texture now showing up on our floor, but the colors don't look correct. You can see that if I hide and show this floor geometry, 
with the floor we have our shadow but we have the wrong colors and that's because now we use this hdri in the diffuse slot and this hdri has the illumination already baked inside but is then re-illuminated again with our dome light here and by this way we have the wrong colors so what we have to do is to apply a color correction on this texture here so that the colors on the floor look exactly the way like they looked on our dome geometry and there's a quite nice little trick you can achieve exactly that so what you can do is apply a new shader here on this floor and just put a simple V-Ray color into a diffuse slot. And let's just put this all the way here to white so that we have a perfectly white floor now appearing. So since we now know that we have a perfectly white floor as a material, we can see how this is illuminated by our HDI environment and then pick those color values and then divide our floor texture with those color values. And then by this way, we should have a perfectly matching color of the floor between our dome geometry and our floor geometry. But before we pick the color, we have to prepare a few things. And number one, we have some tone mapping here enabled, which basically makes our picture look nicer and correct on our monitor, but it falsifies those colors. Let's just disable here the tone mapping so that we just show our raw linear image on the monitor. And then let's also hide our shading dummy and any kind of other geometry that's interfering with our ground plane because we just want to pick the color value in here. So for this, let's just go in and copy here this V-Ray color to this new slot. And then let's go and pick here the color value, for example, from the center. You can see we have now this kind of like bluish color that was picked. And this color we can now use to divide the texture that we applied here on our floor geometry. But first, now we can enable our tone mapping again if we want to. And let's go inside the shader. Let's just cut this texture from the diffuse. So we have this gray material and just also apply that on our floor. Let's put now here a V-Ray comp texture and then let's put our HDI back into the source A of this here and then the color that we picked into the source B. And at the moment, this operator here is set to add, but what we have to do is to set it to divide. And once we do this, you can see we have now a perfect match between our DOM geometry and between our floor geometry. And if we now unhide here our shading dummy, you can see we have the shadow of the shading dummy appearing on the floor. And we have this very seamless transition here between floor and background. So now since we just use a standard view material here as a floor, we can also make use of its various benefits here. For example, we can use the same HDRI and just apply that here as a bump map. And then if we zoom in, you can see that we have this bump effect, which is now appearing here on our floor geometry, or we can go inside, increase the reflections. And you can see we have a correct reflection here from our geometry dome back on our floor again. So here I went in and added those nice water puddles on the shader. You can see the result here looks actually quite believable and convincing. I also added some reflection on the floor here. So we get these nice specular highlights here moving over the floor if we move our camera around. If you want to know how to add these water puddles, you're lucky there's our own dedicated video tutorial that you can find in my YouTube channel that explains the exact process that was used in order to generate those water puddles in here. So my final setup that you can also find on my Patreon, I went in and streamlined a bunch of stuff. And I just want to show you how the workflow with this file here would be. So after opening the file, you first would go in and import or merge your model. Let's just use this truck model here, for example. And then when this shows up, you can just select the entire HDI setup here with this controller. You can rotate that around, for example, and your illumination will change according to the position. You can also go in and scale the HDI environment. And there's even a parameter here where you can define the projection of the HDRI on our geometry. So you can make that fit to whatever HDI that you're using. If you want to try out some different HDI, you can just open your material editor. And there are those four slots here, which are important. So first, let's change the HDI for our environment lighting. Let's use this one here, for example. 
Let's just copy the entire path and also paste that into this HDI in here. And now you can see this already updated, but you will notice that the floor doesn't really have the correct color. You can see here our floor is much more blue compared to here. So we have to do the lighting process again. And for this, I have a simple camera set up already. So let's go to this camera. Let's hide our car geometry. Let's disable our tone mapping and let's unhide here this floor delighting layer. And now we can go inside and pick these color values in here. So for picking the color values, I have to go to this layer. And after we pick those color values, we will see a problem in this case. And that's that here they all max out at 255. And that's because the brightness that we want to pick is higher than one. And this doesn't really work with the color picker, but there's an easy fix. You can go here in this node in here. This one is our white color for the floor. We can use a different multiplier. So for example, let's use a multiplier of 0.5. And by this, the colors show up in the range on our monitor again here. And then we can go inside and pick those color values again. But because we put here the multiplier to a value of 0.5, we have to basically invert that by just using a multiplier of two in here. And then this way we have the correct colors now in our color picker. And now if we hide this delighting layer and we show our truck again, you can see that now if I rotate here, our floor and our environment have exactly the same color. Let's put back our tone mapping again. And by this way, we have a realistic representation here of our environment and our car looks perfectly integrated into that. Since the placement of the water puddles here depends on the HDRI, they're also placed in a nice way where you can see that we have even some water here in those smaller gaps and we have quite a nice and realistic result. And as I said, if you want to know more about how those water puddles were created, you can also find a detailed video in my channel. So there you have it. This concludes my workflow of how to integrate 3D objects perfectly into an HDI environment. And I hope that you learned something from it that you can pick up for your own projects. And as usual, you can always find all of my scene files on my Patreon together with a whole course on car rendering and lots of other additional goodies. So check that out if that's interesting for you. Otherwise, see you next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.